Hi, Dr. Osborne here with Web Wellness University, and today I want to talk a little bit about vitamin B1, also known as thiamine. This particular vitamin, obviously it's a B vitamin, but it's very, very common. Uh, the deficiency of this nutrient is very, very common in patients who have a history of gastrointestinal disorders, things like inter irritable bowel syndrome, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, gastroesophageal reflux disease, also known as heartburn. So it's very, very common in those individuals. So the deficiency in this nutrient can cause a lot of the symptoms that people will see their doctor for on a daily basis. One of the main areas of effect for this particular nutrient, there's a molecule that we all make. We make it in our nervous system. It's called acetylcholine. And we can't make this nutrient without vitamin B1 or we can't make this chemical without vitamin B1. Acetylcholine deficiency can lead to memory loss, brain fog, Right, we hear all the time um, people experiencing the inability to focus or concentrate. Well, this is part of that brain fog. But another symptom that's very common with acetylcholine suppression is depression. Right, so we get these neurological parameters. Acetylcholine is a nervous chemical, and so memory loss, brain fog, and depression can all occur as a result of B1 deficiency, vitamin B1 deficiency. One of the other components to vitamin B1 deficiency that also affects the nervous system has to do with generalized nerve damage itself. Vitamin B1 is necessary for the maintenance of nerve cells and so it can actually trigger um, what looks like or appears to be seizure disorder. So individuals with B1 deficiency over a long enough period of time can actually have nerve damage and that can trigger what looks or appears to be a seizure type disorder problem with that is if we don't investigate B1 in patients that have seizure already, putting a patient on an anti-seizure medication can actually lead to a vitamin B deficiency. So again, we can recreate a problem if we don't properly investigate. One of the other parameters or components to vitamin B1 deficiency that's actually quite common is it will affect blood levels of a couple of different chemicals we call lactate and pyruvate. Now, these are molecules necessary um, for production of energy inside muscle tissue. So what ends up happening is energy deprivation inside your muscles and that can lead to muscle pain. It can lead to fatigue. But also importantly, it can lead to muscle damage in the heart so we can start to develop a heart condition as a result. And that heart condition, oftentimes referred to as congestive heart failure, CHF for short, is, is known to be caused as a result of vitamin B1 deficiency. So again, we take a person who's vitamin B1 deficient, they develop this abnormal chemical parameter in the blood which leads to increased acidic buildup and lack of the ability to produce energy. That leads to muscle fatigue, muscle pain as well. Your heart is a muscle, so we get that same fatigue and that same reduced energy capacity in the heart to produce energy, and that over time leads to congestive heart failure. There was a recent study published on this very thing where patients who were hospitalized with congestive heart failure, um, actually many of them didn't have this intrinsic congestive heart failure of unknown origin. Many of them actually had a vitamin B1 deficiency. Now the name for that, there are a couple different diseases um, but the major name for the disease of vitamin B1 deficiency is called beriberi. And beriberi affects your heart and it affects your nervous system. So those are the two tissues. We have what's called wet and dry beriberi, depending on whether we're talking about heart or nervous tissue. And those are the, those are the main manifestations of vitamin B1 deficiency. Now, if we take a little quick history lesson, what we know is that in 1943, The U.S. government banned the sale of grain, processed grain primarily, because of the known relationship to beriberi. In essence, when you processed grain and you made breads and you made other things out of it, it actually didn't contain adequate quantities of vitamin B1. And so what happened was widespread beriberi occurred in, in the population. And so in 1943, the U.S. government said, hey, you can't sell this stuff anymore unless you fortify it with 
certain vitamins. And vitamin B1 is one of those nutrients on that list because of its association with beriberi. And this is very, very common in food products that are grain-based. Now, since we, we look at the gluten-free population and all these new gluten-free products that are coming out onto the market, and you'll see on pretty much all of those labels, you'll see that this product is fortified, and you'll see, you flip it over, and you'll see vi vitamin B1, and you'll see vitamin B3, also known as niacin. You'll see that it's fortified with iron. And the reason why that actually exists is because of that law that was passed. Those, those grains have to be fortified because if they're not, they're going to end up causing malnourishment, vitamin and mineral deficiency diseases that we don't really want to end up having. Now, something else that I mentioned a minute ago I want to touch back on is that, that over here we said congestive heart failure, edema, congestive heart failure, but also high blood pressure, hypertension is one of the manifestations of that wet berry barrier or that form of vitamin B1 deficiency as it affects the heart. And the problem that I want to bring up, if you're taking or using a diuretic medication, diuretics are designed to treat congestive heart failure, edema, and high blood pressure. Basically what they do is they push excessive fluid out of your bloodstream. The problem with diuretics is they actually block vitamin B1's ability to get into heart cells. There's been a number of studies that shows that vitamin B1 deficiency is very prominent in patients who have a long history of diuretic use. So if you're one of those, if you've been taking a diuretic to treat your, uh, your blood pressure issue or congestive heart failure, you definitely want to make sure that your doctor's following up with you to check your vitamin B1 levels on a regular basis. So this is Dr. Osborne with Web Wellness University. If you liked the video, please hit like down below, hit subscribe to our, to our uh, newsfeed, and uh, click the link below to get more information on vitamin B1. We'll see you next.